Hi everyone, my name is Tej. Uh, who's heard of Tej Talks? A few of you. Cool, that's awesome. So uh, I am a property investor, full-time in South Wales, and I have a podcast called Tej Talks. You might have heard of TED Talks, but I kind of, I don't know, someone just came along and copied my name. But yeah, anyways, we'll deal with that later. So I want to kind of give you an introduction to who I am quickly, and then go into like some of the real value. So <laughs> Romero asked me to speak about the mindset of success. And it's quite a big, big topic, especially in property, because there's so many factors that make someone successful. I mean, firstly, what is success? Like that, That's a question in itself that's going to vary from person to person. So a little background into my podcast. Um, it's done all right. We've had 126,000 listens, 90 countries. We've ranked 15 on the iTunes chart. And this has all been done in a year. Now, a year is a long time. And it's important. Thank you. It's, uh, it's important to know that it's taken a year, and this will be important later in the presentation. Um, what this podcast has allowed me to do is to interview, I think, 60 people, including Romero, about their property journey, become their friends, network with them, and understand what makes them tick and what makes them successful. So I want to share what I've learned from them and from myself. So again, just to introduce you to myself, uh, this is when I started property full-time, which was about six months ago in March. The portfolio was worth, I think that the house is 80 grand. And in pretty much five months, we're just shy of 800,000 um, pounds. This has happened in the past five months, and I've used this much of my own money. Now, for me, I'm quite pleased with this. Like, this is, you know, a form of success for me. So along this journey, I mean, look, this is the net worth growing, but like the emotions would be up, down, up, down every single day to get to this level of, of growth, right? And it's possible, anyone can do this. Like I'm just, there's nothing special about me. Like anyone can achieve this. And, and this is what's next. Um, red is in legals, green is in the pipeline. So you can see, really I'm hoping, it'll make an awesome podcast title. In six months, the portfolio will be worth a million pounds. Um, so that'd be pretty, pretty awesome, right? Now, doing this has not taken me five months. It's taken me a year. It's taken me five months of being in rooms like this, networking, speaking to people, asking people questions, paying for people's Nando's, buying people coffee, and asking them, how the hell can I do this, right? So you're all doing the right thing by being here. But this only paints half a picture. Um, and like most of you know, social media, as good as it is, my first tip actually is, when you see things on social media, I could post this, for example, and none of you would have a clue about the challenges or difficulties, you'd just say, how do I do that? So easy, six months. But I didn't tell you about the six before. So the first kind of, the main theme I'm trying to get in is property, it is harder than it looks, but there's ways of making it easier. So the first tip for having a, a mindset of success is just knowing that it's never gonna sort of look like this. There's always gonna be, six months here of hard work and failing and trying to buy properties and trying to raise money until something like you know this happens um, and like i said it's possible by anyone so no oh, the s should be there uh i was going to do an activity but i know it's quite late in the evening but something that you know like i said before before we talk about the mindset to achieve success success varies between us so for one person success could be having a multi-million turn of a business. For someone else, it could be four grand a month sitting on a beach. For someone else, it could be a yacht. For someone else, it could be cuddling dogs all day. Like, they all sound awesome, but success is different. So when you're on this journey of property, don't look at me, don't look at Romero, don't look at Samuel, look at people like this for inspiration, but your success is totally different. And it's so easy at the start to see, ooh, oh, she's doing rent to rent, ooh, 10 grand a month. Oh wait, but doing buy to let, oh, they're owning assets, oh, HMOs, lots of cash flow, and not actually knowing what you want from it. So when I first started out, I was kind of like, yeah, I want freedom, I want cash flow, I want something from it, but I didn't know what. And because of that, I had no clarity in what I was doing. So every single day that I was, I don't know, viewing properties, trying to raise money, I was kind of like, but what am I doing it for? And if you don't have that, forget the rest of the presentation, forget anything anyone said today, you need some clarity on what success looks like to you. And it can change. In a month, it might be this. And in a year, it might be this. 
but you need clarity on what success is to you. Um, who here has a, like a, a, a vision board? People know what vision boards are? Yeah. You should all have them. People who don't, it's essentially a, you know, a, a slide like this with pictures of what you, well, what you define as successful, what you want in the future. Lamborghinis, cheese, not no cheese for Samuel though, but cheese for everyone else. Um, you know, whatever you holiday, four holidays a year, you know, looking after your family, dream kitchen, whatever. Chuck it on the on the vision board and every day, every morning, pick it like print it or have it on your computer and look at it every morning. If that doesn't inspire you, then you haven't maybe got the clarity on the success that you need, right? Like you have to start with the end goal in mind. It's easy to say I want 10 HMOs, but what do you actually want? You want 10 sets of annoying tenants? Or do you want 10 sets of a thousand pounds a month? Like, wh what do you want, right? So start with the end in mind. Now, people say to me, Tej, how have you like, grown this quickly? How have you done what you've done? Because six months ago, I, was, I, I had pretty much nothing in terms of assets. Uh, the first thing, like I said, is goal setting. Who in here has goals that they want to achieve in a year? So 2020 November, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, more, good. Everyone else, should have goals. Now, goal setting is really, really tricky. You've got people like, who knows Grant Cardone? Yep, Mr. Mr. America saying, 10x baby, you need to have a million houses in a year. And then you've got like people in England kind of being like, oh, well, you, you could have one a year, you can have it. And then you're kind of in the middle, like, which one do I do? And if I'm gonna go for Grant, how do I you know, buy that many houses in a year? And if I'm going for this person, how am I gonna live off 10 quid a month for my, for my buy to let? It's very tricky to set your goals. One thing I'd say is, set your goals big enough so that when times are tough, they're big enough to motivate you. You know, if your goals, and I'm just gonna, random numbers, if your goal is a thousand pounds a month net profit from your portfolio, that's four buy to lets. You can do that in a month, really. A month of active, obviously before you're gonna have a, a growing period. But then, when you're going through the tough times of buying those four buy to lets, is a thousand pounds a month big enough to motivate you and push you through? Probably not. Whereas if you set five, you're thinking, you know what, I'm going for something big here. This, this down period is worth it, right? So make them big enough so that they motivate you. Clarity, I've already said before, like you need, you need clarity on your goals, but you need flexibility, right? I started off wanting to do rent to rent, then I was like, oh, I nearly had one. And I was like, no, actually I've got savings for a year. I don't need to quit my job quickly. Let me twist it up. And I'm now I buy to lets. But at the same time, I'm also flexible enough. If I see a HMO deal, I'm buying it. If I see a block of flats, I'm buying it. And it's important that, well, it's flexibility within limits, right? Like, you don't necessarily, like, if someone brings me a rent to rent deal that brings me two grand a month, am I going to say yes? Maybe, maybe not. But I've been in a business where I did not enjoy, as my own bloody business, where I didn't enjoy what I was doing. So because of that, I don't care how much money it makes me, if I don't enjoy it and I don't like it, I ain't, I ain't doing it. Simple as that. Because um, I've done it for three years and it made money, great, but I wasn't happy. So what was the point? Uh, so be flexible within what you want to do. It's your own business, like don't, you are the boss. So if you don't want to do one thing, you don't have to do it just because you know, that person's doing it. Um, and being in a room like this, speaking to people like this, is how you identify your strategy. Going out there and trying strategies is how you identify it. But clarity is important. If you start at the end, right, I want uh, you know, two million pound portfolio, 10 grand a month, I'm done. Cool, those are your goals. Now work backwards in how to get there. Uh, you need confidence. Like I have got, I've saved thousands of pounds from solicitors, kitchens, tiles, anything you can think of for a property because I've been like, oh, go on, take 10 off, take 50 quid off, take this off, go on, go on. But there's so many people who say, was oh, that the price? Yeah, cool, I'll pay that here. And I'm like, mm-mm, that's not the price. What is the price, right? And little things like that, you just think about saving 100 quid on every transaction, right? Every, every solicitor transaction. They cost, you know, 400 to 1,000 pounds. If you can save 100 quid off that and you're buying 10 houses, that's a lot of lunches, right? So have the confidence to ask for discounts, to walk up to random people here at network, you know, wherever, and ask them questions. Have the confidence to walk into an estate agent when they all look up, look up at you like, oh, fuck, right? To just walk in and boss it, right? Have the confidence, and this, is a, this will lead to my last one, but 
depending on your risk, your risk profile, have the confidence to put in offers without the money sometimes, right? And I'll, I'll tell you why that has worked before, but that's not for everyone, that's depending on your risk level. If you don't have confidence, the rest don't matter. Because if you don't have the confidence to follow through to your goals, your dreams, your ambitions, then you're not gonna have the confidence to walk into a house, price up a refurb and be like, okay, okay, this is 15 grand, I can offer this much now, I can buy it. Because if you don't have confidence in that refurb, you don't know how much you can offer, right? Depending on your strategy. So confidence is, I think it's a tricky one to sort of advise on how to get better at, but being in a room like this, speaking to people, doing Facebook videos, um, speaking to people on the phone, uh, speaking to builders, speaking to estate agents, everything that we do in our property business will build your confidence without risk. I mean, without, uh, without a doubt. Taking risks. Okay, how, okay, in this room, how many people have one property? How many people have up to five? And then five onwards? So, the, so you, have you ever both bought, have you ever offered on properties without having the money to buy them? Many times, of course. <laughs> so this is a risk, right? Like, I know conveyancing technically takes three months or whatever. So you do have a, a bit of time to play around and your solicitor can play dumb as if they're not doing it anyway. And you know, to try and slow it down. So it's not like a risk, like you have to complete on a property tomorrow, but it's still a risk. Because if you don't, you know, go through with it for some dumb reason, like, oh yeah, I didn't have the money, Mr. Estate Agent, sorry. You're dead to that estate agent. Like they, like they will then talk about you to other investors, like, oh yeah, we had an investor, they pulled out, blah, blah, blah. And you don't want to be that person. You want to be the person they're telling that to. Um, so take risks because, you know, once you put an offer in, if you do surveys, you've then got a week or two for the survey. If you're buying cash, you've got to put it shorter. But if you're buying mortgage, then, oh, sorry, you know, mortgage has taken a few weeks. You've got about a month to raise the funds. Now, if you're buying in prime central London and your deposit is 2.5 million pounds, maybe take less of a risk. Um, if you're buying in the Midlands, the North, Wales, where my deposits are like 10 grand, 14 grand, 20 grand, Midlands is 25, 30, 40, you know, you can kind of take a bit more of a risk uh, depending on your network. But you have to take some risks in order to succeed in property. Uh, I've, I've had two week completions from an auction where yes, I had four and a half grand on my debit card, which is the weirdest thing ever seeing that leave a debit card. Like you don't get four and a half grand at Tesco's, right? Um, and then being like, cool. Then being like, oh, so I've got to find the 35K in two weeks. Cool, but it worked. I've done the same with four week completions. I've done the same where I said to the vendor, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll exchange in a week. I said, oh, I've got four grand, didn't have the rest of it, but did my thing and I found it. Um, sometimes you take risks with, I mean, for example, right, I'll get to this sec shortly, but as the property investors who are buying, we put out offers, 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 right? What if they all got accepted? Has anyone ever thought about this, right? There's such a negative expectancy because there is. What would you do? I mean, that's a risk in itself, but we don't stop to think about that. You know, if I get 10 calls from an agent, I'm like, oh, do I have to buy all of them? Um, so, you know, take your risks as you want to, but I believe that you have to take risks in order to do things. But if you're taking money from people, that should be protected. That should be safe. There shouldn't be risks in that. If there is, you tell the person. Has anyone heard of like, the planning gain strategy? So some people will buy a piece of land without planning, they'll say, right, we're gonna get planning on it. Planning might cost, I don't know, let's say 50 grand in this case, because it's a big plot. They'll say to you, some people will say, right, if we get, if we get planning permission, you get 40% return in six months, but if we don't, you lost money. And some people do that, because it's 40% versus you know, losing it. If you had a couple of grand and they were kind of crowdfunding, I mean, some people would risk it, 40% return especially if you've done your research on the area and it's likely to get it, but they've told you that. If someone says I'm buying a buy to let in Croydon, you know, safe as bricks, then that's not taking a risk. So just, just be careful with things like that. But in your journey, you have to take risks. I think one thing people don't talk about is intelligence. Like I think you have to be a little bit smart to be in property because it's kind of like book intelligence and emotional intelligence. 
I think a key part of being successful in property is emotional intelligence. Being able to read an estate agent or a vendor or your solicitor or an investor or a potential investor, if you can understand their body language and what they're saying but not saying, it will put you 10 steps ahead of someone with no emotional intelligence who's just like, oh, cool, yeah, yeah. Like, you want to be actively taking this stuff in. So, like, again, there's, there's not necessarily a way to build intelligence, but reading is, is a great way to build intelligence. And I've got some books at the end which will take you through that. Uh, patience. Um, a lot of property courses, as we all know, will uh, say, six months, I'll make you 50 grand, and you'll be financially free. How many people believe that? Hands up. It can happen, don't get me wrong. It can happen, but I think if we can find the statistics, which will be really juicy, there'll probably be this many people who actually achieve that. Um, a lot of it depends on us, not just the courses. So I'm not trying to say anything there. But what I am trying to say is, it takes time. Like before I bought a single house, I had five months of networking, podcasting, putting myself out there, buying people food, doing whatever the hell I had to, to try and buy just one friggin' property, right? Like, it took six months of me, oh, I'm kind of doing viewings, yeah, I guess I am trying to buy property. And I, and I pretty much got nothing until like the sixth month. You know, are you willing to put in five, six months of just relationship building and knowledge building before doing something that can be financially free? Once, these, um, once my portfolio is out of refurb, off the bridges, off the investor finance, and it's on mortgages, that should be bringing in two, 2.25K 2. a month net profit. I mean, I live at home, that's financial freedom, yo. I'm done, I'm retiring. And that took six months. So obviously it's not enough, but what I'm saying is it can be done and you can achieve it, but you need patience because it took me a year really, right? So not too much patience though. Don't wait around forever, don't, you know, don't have too much patience. There's a, there's a balance to have. I think bigger picture, you need patience, but day to day, when you're getting things done, you need uh, less patience. Who here has dealt with property solicitors before? How annoying can they be? Yeah, you all know, right? Um, I set from day one with my solicitors, I'm gonna chase you, I'm a bulldog, I want this complete in two weeks, I'll happily pay extra, but don't ignore my emails, don't ignore my calls, I'm like a needy ex-boyfriend, I'll be all up in your messages, yeah? If, if you're not getting back to me, and I've not had a problem. Because on day one, I put my foot down and said, listen, I'm not an old school investor who wants to wait three months for conveyancing, I want 28 days max, yeah? What holds me back is the solicitor or maybe an investor taking a bit more time or a bridger. But I'm like, let's get it done. Um, same with agents, I'm just all the time, what have you got for me? What deal have you got for me? What have you got? Oh, is that falling through? Is that falling through? So I don't have patience on a small scale, but in the bigger picture, I have tons of patience. I can wait. So who knows what stoicism is? Ah, okay, good. So really briefly, back in the old days when they used to look like that, um, and wear you know, cloths like that, there was a bunch of people in, I think it was Italy and Greece who were philosophers. Now, the main principle of their sort of um, teaching is what Shakespeare did, basically copied them and said, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. I mean this, right? Has it got a positive or negative sentiment? No. If it cut me, would I be pissed off at it? Probably. But if it showed me how to make a million pounds in a year, I'd love it, right? Perception. Like, if I'm, if I'm standing this close to you, you could feel really awkward or you could feel really happy, right? Perception. If you lose a deal, you could be really happy, or you could, you decide it, you are, you are in control of how you respond to things. And when you can kind of separate the emotions of, oh, it made me feel like this, to, hmm, how did that make me feel? Cool. All these rejections in property, all these things going wrong, all these failed investor meetings, these failed offers, would just be nothing, because you think it's nothing, right? And this is super important. Be indifferent to what makes no difference. If you get rejected from, you know, like you put 10 offers out, they all get rejected. Yes, you're 10 steps closer to a yes, and maybe you're 10 steps further from financial freedom. But does it make a difference in the grand scheme of things? Potentially, it affects your income, right? Like it is a sort of serious thing. But, like, I guess it's kind of philosophical. You have to just view it as, 
oh well, another day, another 10 offers rejected, next, right? And when you get like that, all the refurb challenges, all the freaking toilets leaking piss everywhere, all the tenants you know, doing whatever they're doing, all the leaking guttering that ruins the new plaster, all the stuff that's yet to come, you'll just be like, whatever. You know, yesterday my builder said, uh, yeah, the roof is 900 quid on top of budget, Ted. I said, you know, cool, do it then. W what choice do I have? Does it make a difference? No, I have to do it. I'll oh, tell the render's coming off. Oh, what's the worst that can happen? It'll land on your tenant's head. Okay, so let's fix it. It costs three grand, but what, what can I do about it, right? It makes no difference. It has to be done. So just accept things um, as they are. Again, look, it's very easy to say this, right? I don't know everyone's situations, but these two quotes and the philosophy behind it, for me personally, has been a big part of my you know, success and my happiness so far. So, Jeremy, you would have seen this yesterday, uh, people in Knightsbridge, but for everyone else, I think there's two Ps that uh, can help you be successful in property. So I've kind of covered the mindset like a whistle-stop tour of mindset, but I want to give you, I guess, more physical or tangible advice and put some numbers to what I'm saying about rejection. So the first P is people. Uh, old school businesses see people as just cogs, you know, just turning and just making the, the big machine that is a business work. But new companies like, who's heard of Monzo Bank, for example? Yeah, or like new tech startups. Basically everyone, all the hipsters in Shoreditch treat people like people, um, most do anyway. And that is how you all have to see your businesses. Now, I don't have anyone on my payroll. I don't employ anyone at all, but I work with these people and some of them on a daily basis, pretty much. And I'm sure we all do and we all will. Uh, it is so important that you build these relationships. I don't care if you do, don't do a viewing for three months. If you can build relationships with these people, you will save and make money. My broker charges 900 quid normally. He, I, he, I pay him 275 quid. Project manager charges 15% normally, I pay him six. My solicitor charges for uh, cash purchases, something like 500 quid, they're a conveyancer, they charge me 450, et cetera, et cetera. Now you just think how many transactions, like I said before, are you gonna save by having good relationships with these people? But also like, if you have a good relationship with someone, aren't you more likely to want to help them and to do even better by them, right? Because you like them. And it works both ways. If these people in your team like you and they trust you, then they're gonna do better for you. As unfair as it sounds, that's life. We, we help people we like, and we like people we like. So focus on people because there'll be a point where you view a property, you have a refurb, something goes wrong, and you're like, I don't have a clue what the hell to do right now. And if you haven't got a network, who are you gonna call? It ain't Ghostbusters, you know? You need someone to help you. And by building a network, you know, I and other people in this room will have, you know, people at the end of a phone book, I can call and say, what do I do? What is this? You know, if I want to buy a piece of land to build from, interesting enough, where I invest, a lot of land is like negative. The seller has to pay you in order for you to make a profit. Example, land is on for 30 grand. It costs 70 grand to build a house. The end value of the house is 90 grand. So, so it's an interesting area that I invest, but 